So let's take a look at the circle of Willis and associated elements of the cerebral circulation. So what we're looking at here is an anterior view of a model of the cerebral circulation that I have made um, using data from a magnetic resonance angiogram uh, obtained from a real living patient. So this is the very model that you will have the opportunity to see 3D printed in the dissecting room. So as I said, we're looking at the anterior view here. And if we just look at the lateral view, we can appreciate that in fact, the cerebral circulation is not a simple flat plan as we might get the impression from when we look in our textbooks. The cerebral circulation is in fact three dimensional and follows the contours of the skull base. Now, looking at the lateral view, we can see very clearly that we have elements of the anterior circulation. So here are the internal carotids and the anterior circulation. And we have elements of the posterior circulation with the basilar artery here. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to demonstrate to you the different elements of this model uh, and we'll talk in general about them. So, so let's start off looking at the anterior circulation. So if I rotate this model around a little bit to sort of a posterolateral view, we get quite a nice view of um, the right hand side focusing on the internal carotid. Now the internal carotid within the neck um, is visible here. So this is the internal carotid ascending up through the neck and entering the carotid canal at approximately this point. Once it's entered the carotid canal, it runs anteromedially. And we can see that if we look down upon the model from this direction here. So we can see the internal carotid running anteromedially in a kind of diagonal direction here through the petrous portion of the temporal bone. At a point approximately here where it sits above foramen lacerum, it then ascends once more. So this is the second of its six twists on the course up towards the brain. Uh, it then loops around the clinoid processes. So it does a third bend and uh, a fourth bend before it comes out at this point here, closely related to the optic nerve. There it does a fifth bend before splitting into its two major terminal branches, the um, anterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery. Okay, so that's the course of the internal carotid artery on each side. And the internal carotids form the majority of the blood supply to the brain particularly supplying the anterior structures of the brain. Now let's have a little look in more detail at the anterior and middle cerebral arteries. If we go to this view here, you can see that the two anterior cerebral arteries coming from the internal carotids run medially, and then they get very close together. And it's these branches here that loop back over the corpus callosum to supply the medial aspect of the cerebral hemisphere. Note that the two anterior cerebrals are joined at this point by the anterior communicating artery. So the anterior communicating artery joins the two anterior cerebrals, making the circle complete at the front. Now we have here the middle cerebral artery. Now this angiogram is not high resolution enough to see the small lenticulostriate branches that would be coming off at this point, going up to the internal capsule and the basal ganglia. However, we can see the two major branches of the middle cerebral artery here. We have the superior division and the inferior division of the middle cerebral artery. The superior division tending to supply more anterior structures, the inferior division tending to supply more posterior structures. So those are the elements of the anterior circulation that we can see um, on this particular model. Now there are of course more branches, um, but not all of these branches are visible on an angiogram like this. Now let's go to the posterior circulation now. And if we go to this view, we can see the posterior circulation very, very nicely. We see here ascending up through the neck 
and through the base of the skull, the two vertebral arteries. Now the vertebral arteries converge together at this point to form the basilar artery. So the basilar artery is an interesting artery. It sits right in the midline along the skull floor um, and it is the key artery for the posterior circulation. The basilar artery at its tip here bifurcates into the two posterior cerebral arteries. Now, the posterior cerebral arteries, if we just tilt this down a little bit, we can see the two posterior cerebrals very, very nicely. The posterior cerebral arteries surround the midbrain on their way to the back of the brain where they'll supply the occipital lobe um, and the inferior portion of the temporal lobe. So there are branches which we cannot see on this model, but there are small branches coming off this posterior cerebral feeding the midbrain. Another key um, structure coming off the posterior cerebrals are these two small vessels, which are the posterior communicating arteries, the posterior communicating arteries. And they connect the posterior circulation with the anterior circulation. So here are the two posterior communicating arteries joining the posterior cerebrals up to um, the internal carotids. What else can we see in the posterior circulation? Well, one or two other branches are visible. So for example, this is probably um, the posterior inferior cerebellar artery. And we can only see the one on the left hand side here. For some reason, the one on the right hand side did not fill with contrast. Um, here, this could be the anterior inferior cerebellar artery going to the right hand side. And finally, up at the top, we can see a small branch, um, one on the right and one on the left. If I just zoom in, we can see those better. One on the right and one on the left coming off of the top of the basilar, but before the bifurcation. And these are the superior cerebellar arteries. So that's just a very brief description, very brief walkthrough of the major branches of the circle of Willis. Thanks for listening.